What's up everybody? Welcome to Hammerdown Motorsports. I hope you guys are having an amazing day. Another beautiful day here in Pennsylvania. Starting to get a little bit of that cool fall air and I'm absolutely loving it. We've been dying in the heat for a little while so it's time for a change. And speaking of change, we have a new truck for the channel. Yes, we have finally made a decision on what to do to replace the 2019 Ram. And getting rid of the 2019 Ram, that was kind of a bit of a shakeup for the channel. I could hear that in some of the comments and some of the people were wondering what we're going to be getting. And honestly, we are definitely back in a Ram. I can tell you that for sure. So rest assured, don't hit that unsubscribe button. We are still a Ram channel. We're still going to be continuing on with that and it's gonna be an absolutely amazing build. You're not gonna be disappointed. So right behind you right now is our new truck for the channel. So should we reveal it right now? We got a Ford, no, I'm just kidding. And here it is, we have, oh yes, a white Ram Rebel. Now, this was a big decision. This is something that I was not necessarily sold on in the beginning, but after making this decision, I am 100% on board with this truck. So with that being said, let's take a closer look. So over here, you can see we have our nice silver aluminum bash plate. They do have for 2020 a black package for this truck. And personally, it, it's not for me. I mean, it does look really, really good, especially on the black trucks where the bash plate is all one color. This is actually a 19. And for the deal that we got on this truck, I could not turn it down. If I was to get a 2020, I would have had to wait about six to eight weeks or try to get one that's on the lot with absolutely no incentives, being that it is so early in the release. But I actually like the look of this a little bit better. Just for me personally, I do like the silver ram on here. And I do like the bash plate to kind of give it a little bit of a contrast. Break up the black a little bit, especially with the white truck. And the same goes for the wheels. We have that little bit of a machined edge on our satin black wheels. Kind of goes with the whole scheme of the truck. That little bit of silver just kind of breaks everything up. Goes with the white lettering on the tires. And then we've got a little bit kind of of the silver with the lights and everything like that. It just looks absolutely symmetrical and I just couldn't pick a better spec for this truck. Every time I look at this truck, I like it more and more. And here's something that we didn't have on the last Ram or any of the Rams I've ever had. And I've always wondered about the Ram box, but now after only having this truck for one day, I cannot live without. Check this out. You open it up like that. You've got all this space in here to store things. It's got a nice seal on it. You can keep things dry in there. If you wanted to, you could actually pour ice in here, put whatever you want. And when you're done, you just pull this little plug out of the bottom on either side, drain the water out and you're good to go. You've got a cooler in the side of your truck. And over here on the driver's side, we also have a 110 plug that can be controlled from the inside of the truck. You hit the switch in there and then this goes live and then you've got a power outlet on the outside of your truck. If you're going tailgating or anything like that, this is gonna be absolutely amazing. And if you do have a buddy that you can fit inside the Ram box, I'm not sure who you guys hang out with, you never know. There is a little escape latch right here, just in case, so you can get out. Also over here, another thing that we didn't have on the last Ram is this nice little step right here. You just put your foot on it, kind of slide backwards, and you've got this really nice step to be able to get into the bed. Step on there, step onto the bumper, and no problem whatsoever, you can get into the bed, do whatever you need to do, and have a really easy way to step down out of the truck. Also, one thing we didn't have in our last Ram is this cargo management system. It's just a rail that goes on either side, and you've got these two hooks that also work as a cleat. You can just unscrew this a little bit, and then you pull on them, and they have little notches that they'll slide into, so you can be able to move them whichever which way, depending on what you have in the bed of the truck, so you can tie it down nice and securely. And I know I complained about the last truck not having the LED bed lighting, but there is a story behind this. This truck does not have it equipped, but we do have a brand new Mopar set in the box ready to go in. I did buy it for the last truck. We didn't have a chance to install it just yet, so there will be an install video on the LED bed lighting coming up very soon. One thing about this step is it's very easy to get to come out, but every time you try to push it back in, it definitely goes back in with a vengeance. 
And it's standard on all Rebel models. You do have the Goodyear Wrangler Duratrac tires. These are 18 inch, so you got lots of sidewall. You wanna do a little bit of off-roading. Also, you do have the sipes in here, so if you do end up on any icy roads or anything like that, that should give you extra traction that you need. And I think these are gonna be 100% different than the tires that we had on the 2019 Ram with the 22s. And over here, you can see we have the black tubular side steps. Looks really nice on the truck. They are a little bit high up, and I think if you were off-roading, these might kind of get in your way if you're doing a breakover angle or something like that that's fairly extreme but all in all not really a big deal but amp research if you're listening we definitely could use an upgrade over here and one more thing that's new for 2020 on the rebel is they do offer a graphics package there's actually a hood graphics package and one for the bedside and i had a look at it and it was it was okay i mean it does look cool and probably if i just had the temptation to check the box i probably would but i think Going with a custom graphic on this truck is gonna be more my style. It's gonna make this truck a little bit more unique for the channel. We can get something that's gonna be exactly what I want and I think it's gonna turn out so much better that way. Now stepping into the interior, we got the crew cab on this truck just like our 2019. Absolutely massive cab. We did sacrifice the reclining rear seat. That's a Laramie thing. They don't offer it in the Rebel. Not really something I'm too worried about because I really never sit in the back seat anyway and it doesn't have the heated seats in the rear either. Either. another thing I'm not gonna be using it my kids are in booster seats so it's not really gonna matter then over here in the front you just grab the handle it unlocks the door if you have the key fob in your pocket we've got all these accents in the dash we've got the rebel badge here on the dash we got the leather dash we've got the stitching here as well we did go for the 12 inch screen as well that's a must-have with a Ram we have the rebel logo stitched into the seat We'll hop over here to the driver's side. And one thing I noticed right away is this gauge cluster. It is totally different from the Laramie. You do actually have this kind of 3D thing going on. It almost looks like a connecting rod from your two gauges there. And they actually have gasoline written on the bottom. And over here, you've got temperature written. And it's got the Rebel badge up here instead of Ram. And when you start it up, check this out. You got the Rebel logo come up. And as soon as you start it, the little Rebel badge kind of shakes when the f engine fires up, which is pretty awesome. So here it is, everybody, the new truck for the channel. Let's go take this thing for a drive, and we're going to talk about a little bit of the reasoning behind choosing the Rebel over the other choices that we had. And I'm going to explain to you guys why this truck fits me so well. There it is everybody, the first off-road maneuver with the Rebel and it handled it like a champ. And I know everybody says this, it doesn't look that steep on camera. Trust me, that's steep. If I were to take my Ram Laramie on that, it would have been spinning, it would have been stuck. This thing, not even wheel spin whatsoever. Absolutely 100% impressed with this truck already. All right, first and foremost, I wanted to thank everybody out there for dropping in your comments on the last video. I was absolutely blown away by how many people dropped in what truck that you would buy. You had the opportunity just to buy whatever you wanted at the Dodge dealership. And I definitely took your comments into consideration when we bought this truck. I didn't want to buy a truck that I didn't think my audience was going to like. And I really hope I hit the nail on the head of this truck. And if I didn't, I do apologize. But this is definitely the truck that fits me the best. And I think it's going to be the best for the channel because we can do so much more with the Rebel, I feel, than we could have done with just the plain Laramie. Now let's go through our options. The options that we basically had was the Ram Laramie Limited, which is the top dog, that's the, the flagship truck, and it's super fancy, which also means it's super expensive. Now we do have other vehicles in the family. I didn't want to bankrupt us on one truck. And also the things that it had were nice to have, not necessarily for me need to have. I mean, if you're out there and you need to have all the stuff that that truck offers, all the power to you, it is a beautiful truck and don't get me wrong, I would love to have one, but the fact is 
the stuff that I would have had to pay for on that truck is just more than I need. But I gotta admit, if they did have the black with the black package, I would be hard pressed to say no if they were willing to work a good deal on that truck, but they didn't have one on the lot. Fortunately for my pocketbook, they did have a white one with the chrome package, which definitely was not my style. And I moved on and we continued looking. So now that brings us to the Ram Laramie with the 4x4 package. This truck, I mean, when I was first thinking about buying the truck, that was the truck I was gonna get. I really liked the Laramie. I liked all the things inside it. I liked all the little nuances that it had. And it was kind of a happy medium between the Limited and maybe the Rebel, but it did have all the things that I wanted. It had good tires. It had a ton of options some of which I really didn't need, but were nice to have options. But then came the price. They didn't have one of those on the lot. They are a little bit tough to find right now. And they ended up locating one for me at another dealership. The sticker on that truck was $66,000. And by the time I would have got it out the door, I would have probably been financing close to 70,000. And that's just too much for a half ton for me. I mean, if I'm gonna spend 70 plus thousand dollars, I want a diesel and I want a big work truck, which kind of gets me in a position where I already have a diesel and just basically the whole situation that we have with what trucks are already here and what I need for a daily driver. I didn't need a big diesel truck for a daily driver. If you gotta go into a parking garage or you gotta get into some of the tight parking areas, especially out in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania was built a long time ago when things were a lot smaller. And big trucks, I mean, they're fine for the open road, but if you gotta squeeze them into a inner city parking lot, they're not exactly ideal. So I gotta admit, it was a tough decision not to go with that Laramie. I really like the look of those trucks with all the black appearance package, but we did have those issues with the bumpers chipping really badly. And it just reminded me that a truck to me has to be a truck. And I'm gonna use it as a truck. I'm gonna take it places. I wanna be able to go off of the road a little bit with it. And with the tires that were on the Laramie were terrible. Like I said, if we did get the 4x4 package, that probably would have been remedied a little bit, but you still have a 22 inch wheel. And with those low profile tires, they really just don't perform that well in mud, dirt, snow, all that kind of thing. And on a daily drive, they are a little bit rougher. They do handle a little bit better around the curves than an 18 inch tire does, but you still do have that thin sidewall. It's gonna give you a rougher ride. So with that being said, the Rebel was not my first choice until I drove one. And then things started going on in my mind and I started thinking differently about the truck that I wanted. Now, I really like the off-road style truck. I like the Raptor. I hate the six cylinder. I know people are gonna hate me for that. It's just a personal thing. I don't like the sound of it, that's it. I mean, I'm sure it's a great engine. I'm sure it's got tons of power. We're not really gonna talk about the Raptor too much, but I do like that style. The price on the Raptor is too high and I think it should have a V8, just my opinion. I'm sure I'm not alone on that one. This truck, it's not a Raptor. It's not in competition with the Raptor. It's never meant to be. This was supposed to be in competition with the Z71 Chevrolets and some of the upper FX4 trim level Fords. And it's it's kind of your, your happy medium. It's got a little bit of an off-road package. I would say they kind of overkilled it a little bit. They're definitely beating out the Z71 and the FX4, in my opinion, with the Bilstein shocks, with the reserve reservoir. And I mean, this thing rides awesome. That's what I mean by when I say I drove this truck. I sat in the seat. I love the seat. This seat is amazing. It hugs you on either side. You go over bumps, it's nice and cushioned. So that brings us to the air-conditioned seat. Yes, the Rebel does not have ventilated air-conditioned seats. And I really did like that about the Laramie. That is a sacrifice I had to make. And I mean, I'm living with it. It, it does have heated seats. I would not live without heated seats or a heated steering wheel, I know. It's a truck, you should probably be able to live without any of that kind of stuff. But all in all, when it's cold in the winter time, I'd rather be warm rather than just a seat in the truck to be cool in the summertime because you do have air conditioning. But come on, Ram, put the air conditioned seat in the Rebel. Give us a little bit more luxury. We would definitely appreciate it. But all in all, it's worth the sacrifice for the suspension in my opinion. The tire package is absolutely amazing. You saw how easily this truck climbed up that hill. I had it in four low with a diff lock on. I gave it full send. I wasn't trying to spin the tires. I didn't want my wife to kill me for digging up the grass. And 
yeah, it did it absolutely flawlessly. I have no worries about taking this truck off road. So now that brings us to the power wagon. Now I didn't really leave the power wagon as an option, but it was something that was very popular in the comments and I did give it some consideration. Now they did have a power wagon on the lot. It was white, it had Ram boxes. It was a very, very nice truck. It was a sticker price of about $67,000. So it was about $6,000 more than the Rebel. And it is a big truck, it is a very big truck. Three quarter ton, solid axles, locker, it's got the disconnects for the sway bars. It is a serious off-roader. And I really would have considered that, but for a daily driver, it's really not that practical for me. I mean, if I lived in Alberta, where there's big parking lots everywhere and everybody drives a one ton and you can get in and out of places really easily, that would be fine. But like I said before, Pennsylvania is small. There's a lot of tight areas you have to get into, tight parking lots. Some of the parking spaces, a regular truck, you're line to line and you're gonna get door dinged. It's just, it's a different situation that I have for needing a truck that is a little bit smaller. And having a half ton for the daily drive is definitely the way I had to go. So I think the happy medium for not getting the power wagon is definitely the Ram Rebel. So now it's time for a new mod list for this truck. We do have something coming for the truck that we did have coming for the previous Ram, and that's gonna make this thing absolutely amazing. I can't wait for that one to come in and to be able to share it with you guys. So we do have now an opportunity to build this truck together. Drop in the comments, what do you wanna see on this truck? We're gonna do our best to make that happen, and we're gonna have a whole lot of fun with this build, and I can't wait to share it with all you guys out there. So there you have it everybody, the new Ram Rebel for the channel. It's gonna be an absolutely amazing build and I can't wait to go through it with all you guys out there. If you guys enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. And as always, keep that hammer down.